No glove, no love. Uh, Titanium. What's up with this bottle that I find in the shop? Yeah, your back's gonna be sore by the time you- 69. If we strip this, we're screwed. Shooting for triple digits off this bike. They're frosting up, brother. Arabic tacos. <laughs> it's gonna take some fighting. Stress, bro. <laughs> wow. We got one shot. What is the thing, Harley? It's a sequin. It exploded, the battery melted. The brain that controls the motorcycle. This fool. Mm. We're gonna ride the poop out of it. <laughs> We're so close to putting wheels on it, but there is one problem. Power tools. So let's dig into it and let's get going. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the vlog. Juan, this is a really, really exciting week. Absolutely, I mean, a lot of stuff's coming together and uh, we're ready to make a lot of progress on the bike this week. Yeah, that's a fact. Here at Thrash and Supply and filming this right now, we have about a week and a half to get this bike rolling. And I think there's so much to do this week that we're gonna be giving you guys a couple days of vlogs. This is the last kind of build series that we do in this space. We purposely didn't move to the new facility because there's just too much mess here and we just did not want to move two taken apart lowrider STs with all the parts that are kind of like sitting around the shop. Too dangerous. Yeah. Stuff's going to get missing. Stuff's going to get lost. We're going to get through these builds. We're going to be at Born Free. We're going to be celebrating them and then we'll start moving. A lot of exciting stuff. I think my main goal is going to be uh, let's get the front end and swing arm on and see how that goes. We're going to see a lot of progress quick, but then also it's gonna be like that last 10% that takes a lot of time to get done. So we're gonna see how much of that we're gonna capture, but uh, I'm excited. So let's dig into it and let's get going. This is the new one. Uh, I pressed it in when uh, you were gone, but uh, it's the revised height. So I'm excited to see that go on. All right, and, are we already uh, greased up, ready to go? It's greased up, brother. Lubed up, bearings pressed on. Scared to touch the bearing because he doesn't have gloves no, on. No, all right, I'm holding the nicely cleaned parts. No glove, no love. All right, we're good there. We got sick tie hardware. Putting a little bit of assembly lube on there so we can get a true torque spec. Don't scratch my... Bruh, it's not gonna scratch it. <laughs> scratch the... Okay, and there's one. We're not gonna torque it down yet. I'll just pinch it to where it's not gonna fall out. Where's the O-Lance? Is this, you good yeah. with the pointing? Let's keep going up, brother. How do you feel about that? I feel better than last time. How do you, you feel much. about the side? Let's see, is the logo proper? Bing. Power tools. I'm happy. I feel like once you put the width of a handlebar, yeah, you're gonna get it's gonna be leverage. way looser than what you're feeling right now. And again, you can always back off. Why are you scared? If we strip this, we're screwed. You know what, I'm gonna go to 17. <laughs> what? You getting worried? Take it easy. If I remember correctly, like my dirt bike ones were like, Right in that range in 19, I feel like. Paying attention to is that on a set of right side up forks or like forks you would see on like a dyno like that, the internals aren't being compressed as much if you torque it down more. Versus an upside down set of forks, the internals can be compressed and cause irregular wear. We need to uh, drill out, tap the threads. I think they just got some. We have to drill and tap the threads. No, we need That's to, what you just said. No, we need to clean the threads on these because I think they got it a uh, little so bit. So you want to chase the threads clean on the, the wheels. Threads. I'm going to get some soap and water. And All right, let's clean the threads and let's put the disc on these carbon wheels. We'll be able to compare it to this. Uh, <laughs> This front wheel compared to that front wheel. Not only is it carbon, but it's also we're going to be using. So tie hardware, down for brakes. It's really only towards the bottom, but it uh, won't let you set the screw in all the way. So what's that? It like binds towards the bottom of the thread. You realize that these are all metric? Yeah, I'm <laughs> switching all the, I actually triple check because they give us a drawing. I was like, uh, let me make sure. Obviously we know that fresh tires are slippery. Long time ago on that orange and dark 
Dyna. I put a fresh set of tires on it and I pulled out of the parking lot, not even trying to do a burnout or anything. I slid like I was on ice, literally just like, but and the bike just went right out from under me. Luckily I had a set of bags on it, so it really didn't hurt it. I was starting to think I would, it'd be really a bummer if these tires are slick and for some odd reason a mistake happens and we drop this bike. I would be so bummed. Should we try to buy tire warmers for these? Make it to where your initial ride or do you have to get over, do you think the first well, 100 miles no matter what? Two things, yeah, 100%. I think the mold release, Yeah. I think we need to get out of that or yeah. get through that. If we're gonna film and you wanna like haul ass right away, 1000%, even after the mold release is gone, yeah. these tires, they take heat. Like you need to warm them up. Yeah. Because I'm not saying it's like a, they're on ice, but like, cause I, I have these on my other bike and if the bike's not perfectly up, like if you're like a little lean from a turn and yeah. you get on it, you feel it like, mm, you're like, all right, I need to, I need to heat these yeah. up. You At least we want to ride it. Like, I don't want to like ride it like soft. I want to ride it gnarly. Cool to get like, tire warmers. Yes. Yeah. It's almost like worth it as insurance for yeah. this ride. Even if it's just like the one time we use it. Yeah. Dang it, Dale, no power tools. No longer using these. Let's go find the ones that we're gonna use. Dumping these and going to these. Easily half the weight, titanium. What's up with this bottle that I find in the shop, dude? Doesn't even. What's up with that one? Little simple green. It just says sprocket carrier 40 Newton meters. Oh, that my torque wrench does need to be. It's the same bolt as the Dyna, so I'm but just gonna look at the torque It's spectrum. the same bolt as the Dyna, but it's going into a billet hub, which is probably stronger than the cast one. Yeah, but if this works, there's no need to over tighten it. Struggling, dude. I feel hopeful. There oh, it is. That's what's it. That Dual disc disc screws. 16 to 24. There What'd I say? 25. You'll be all right. Threads are cleaned up, ready to rock. Almost time. Oh. I'm excited to, to weigh these things. Yeah, your back's gonna be sore by the time you... Zeroed right there. Front wheel, both rotors, hardware, bearings. 37.5. I wanna say it's sub 30. Yeah, I think it's sub 30. 24 and a half pounds. 13 pounds. Pretty good. Yeah, and the forks alone were 10. And then that doesn't include the fairing, the exoskeleton. 30 to 40 pounds off the front. Just the front of the bike. I'm gonna throw the stock pulley back on the back wheel so we can get an accurate number of how much lighter the rear wheel is. Hey, should we look it up? Yeah. You can those and then I'll look at the... I handed him on the camera to film torquing this down and he's been holding it without pushing record the whole time. There was a lot of discussion of torque specs. Yeah. All right, that's all of them at 50. You wanna go more? He wasn't going X pattern, just so you guys know. Yes, I was. I don't think we need to go to 60 because you're at 50. I think you just ramrod it to. Ramrod it to 70? You already got to 50, it doesn't matter. All right, 70 foot pounds. You gotta think, this is gonna get hammered with I mean, it's a not, lot it's only going like an eight quarter turn, you know? Yeah. 69, 69. <laughs> you didn't do this side, yes you did. No, cause this one's tight. You didn't switch the bit ever? I thought I did, but it shouldn't go in this hard and it's just fighting me already. Did the other side twice, but to be fair, it felt chunky both times. Right. Tap in. Do you have the right socket? X pattern, done. Let's see how much weight we're saving on this one. This one was 24, yeah. 28 and a half. This one is heavy, bro. So we're gonna go get those weighed up. When we go over there, on that side of the shop is our freezer. I'm gonna bring these spherical bearings. They'll get a little bit of a freeze before we try to press them into the swing arm. 45 and a half pounds. That's the stock pulley, disc brake, tire, rim. This is way lighter. 30, 
28 pounds alone but in wheels we, what's harder or like you can't quantify with numbers is like because this is unsprung weight so like it makes more of a difference like in how it handles rotational mass like that is it's gonna make the bike accelerate faster shooting for triple digits off this bike you gotta take a couple things over to the polisher. Mid controls and exhaust over there. We can bring the one we've been using. And then I think we need to bring a second one for the second bike if we can get that done. I wanna do the bag brackets, but that's gonna have to be like last minute. Cause we need to like dimple dye them. Okay. So. Would you look at that? Just a look at it. We gotta put the bearings in, follow their instructions. It says, use red Loctite when installing the front pivot bearings. Insert supplied set screws to lock in place. But does that mean Loctite on the set screw or Loctite on the shoulder here? I feel like it means Loctite on the shoulder. You're not supposed to take them out. They're supposed to stay in there. And you would never want it to like, go like this. What's that for? It's for my bike, homie. <laughs> Uh, I think so. What about this? Do you think so? You were going to leave the main reason. Oh, I was talking about exhaust. Yeah. The main reason are mid controls. We want you to check out these parts and let us know what you think. I just want to try and see what it looks like. And if it works, then oh, we'll do the try. whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Can we check it out? That's like polish. Yeah. You like that? I don't know, what do you think? I think they both look good. That looks pretty sick. Yeah, I feel like that looks more race. Like the polish, and I think because it's such an imperfect metal. Can you do it all you brushed? Want a, you want a little brush? Yeah. yeah. Is better? Yeah, can you do that? Yeah. Awesome, we have two of them, this one as well. This two? Yep. Yeah. And then all these exhausts, just That's uh, polish. polish. Possible Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. That'd yeah. be awesome. Thank you. Same time, okay? Wednesday. Yeah. Set Wednesday at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay. Three or four o'clock. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever polished things, but I've used those machines before. Um, what makes me a little nervous is they like if you don't hold the part right and it grabs, it'll shoot Homie, the part out. That dude was leaning all of his might into that part when he polished it. Yeah. And was squeezing it like he was on a ladder up a thousand feet. Yeah. I, I could tell just he was like, because if you don't do it right, I've had I've polished stuff like that and it was like, look out! I shot it towards <laughs> the floor and it just ruined the part. All right, back to the shop, swing arm, and hopefully we get the wheels on. Yeah. Aaron the other day was asking me like, why do we like pastor tacos? I don't know the way they come off of the, the trompo and, he, and then he's like, what do you mean trompo? Like, isn't it a spit? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know where trompo came from, Spanish or Mexican. And then like, maybe spit is like Middle Eastern or something like that. Oh, cause they use the same, yeah. They use the same thing, right? But just different meat on it. Yeah, I did a little Googling. These iconic Mexican tacos were originally called tacos Arabes. Arabic tacos, as Lebanese immigrants brought shawarma, lamb, and the spit roasting technique to Mexico in the early 20th century, known today as Tacos El Pastor, meaning tacos in the style of the shepherd. Damn, that's pretty cool. It's a yeah. little combo. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Here? What do you have? <laughs> Keep them cold, bro. Give me a little. Hey, they're frosting up, brother. Why did you just take the last pair of gloves and no, left the there was box another in there? One. There was another one right there. So should we use red? I mean, you would think that you're really never supposed to let that out. All right, well, let's use red. Then. It would suck if it backed out. Damn, that much? I don't know, bro. You can always wipe it off, brother. So I talked to Dave at Track Dynamics, and he said that the retaining ring goes on the outside. That one was gnarly. We got it in a little bit gnarlier than we thought. I don't know if we could have prepared better. So hopefully we're going to prepare better for this one. Jesus, you did a whole boatload, dude. Well, you said a lot. Jesus. Here, I'll wipe some off. And it's one of those things like once we do it once, if we had to, if we had to do it again, we'd figure it out. We'd know what to do. We'd know where we made mistakes to start. All right, let's go throw it on the bike. All right, clean let's it up. Clean that up, throw it on the bike. All right. Getting exciting, guys. The bikes start to look like a bike again. I mean, shit out, you'd be able to push those in with your fingers. That's what you said, and that's what I was expecting. Okay. All right. Whoa. Draft out of the frame, get a check. I was gonna get a tap. 
towel around the... Around the what? Cover the sink. Okay. Wait a second though. This needs to go in too. Should I put pride in this? I can come back and look and see how cool it looks. <laughs> how does it Ew. look? I legit do not know how this thing is gonna go on. It seems that the swing arm is pinched too tight like this way. It's either so precise. Uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned. I mean, we're gonna get it on. <laughs> it's gonna take some fighting. A lot more progress than when we started. We're looking right here, guys. Go, 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 right there. Stop, stop, stop. Put this, Let's yeah. put this in and then you can worry about. Yeah. Bro, I'm impressed. Keep going. Bruh. There. You were stressing on it, huh? <laughs> Homie. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> that was a little stressful. Jake, thanks for the hand. Jake, thanks for the hand job. Yeah, man, anytime. Creepy. <laughs> Dang, dude. Stress, bro. <laughs> like, we got one shot. Literally everything is one shot. We ruin anything, we're screwed. <laughs> hey, boys, where was it? Rob found it. Where was it? Uh, sitting next to the drag books and all the other books look just like this one. <laughs> <laughs> where though? Which which part? On like, the round table. Oh, on the round table like where everyone eats? We've already used the torque wrench half a dozen times. Gone in the book for the torque specs. Very normal. You should be doing the same when you're working on your bike. We're so close to putting wheels on it. But there is one problem. Our torque wrench only goes to 100 foot pounds. And this bolt right here per the factory service manual is 154 to 170 foot pounds. So it's quite a bit more. I don't want to have snap on truck come over here and empty our pockets. We're going to go to Harbor Freight and pick up something that's going to get the job done. And you need one other thing at Harbor Freight. Yeah, I need this like, it's a hydraulic ram. It's for the dimple die. Like, dude, let's just do the wheels when we come back from Harbor Freight. And he's like, can I just please see the wheel on the front end? I need to see some progress, brother. <laughs> Stressing out here. I was trying to keep working and it said that the battery needed a charge before use. So let's plug her in, let's give her a charge. Big stress out. Yeah, I'm gonna need help. Which way? What's it? Where's it? Damn! What is the thing, Harley? Tie bolts. You want to put the brakes on to get an idea? Well, let me get the difference. Let me just measure that and then, then we'll put the brakes on. 110. All right, I'm going to take that. Hopefully, I can just split it. Put the calipers on. See what they look like. 50 50 chance. Just to keep track. And then I'll use that to make the spacers. looking good. Pull up right here, VIP homie. Pull up, right up front. What are we getting? Torque wrench up to 170 foot pounds. The thing is, we have one of those torque wrenches at the new shop. Yeah, waiting. <sighs> I sent you a photo. So get the job done. Yeah, 80 bucks. All right, 250 to 250, boom. Was it close? It was pretty close, but I saw it like, <laughs> Got the rear. Chromey. Chromed out. Chromed out 1100. Two fresh chromies. I'm excited about this bike too. Sheesh. That's Whoa. pretty pretty. Chromed out Harley Max. Oh, Look at the. Show us that front one, Juan. Damn. Damn. Mm. All right, this is too much to think about. We got to work on that bike. You said we got to do it to rhythm, it's brother. It's a sequence. We're going to do. It's a seek one. It's a seek one. Okay, and then 90 degrees. So we're just gonna back up 90, which it's an L from here. So it's like roughly that way. Yeah. Is it completely spin? No, I, you got some spin on it. Okay, and then okay. now we're gonna do the ram wrap torque. That's a, that's the motorcycle stand, brother. <laughs> Custom stand, bro. Quit hating. Ooh, right. move the trash can. You up, said move the trash. Blew it out of the oh. way. <laughs> that feels fine. Pinch bolt. Did it say after? Pivot pinch bolt. Yeah, of course. 20 foot pounds. That we need to put before the battery. What's that? You need my help or? No, I'm just going to help you. Just hanging around. There's nothing else I can do until we do that, really. Yeah, it's definitely built in. 
One time, actually, so when I used to ride freestyle, we had the, uh, a crane truck to get it out of the foam pit, almost like a clock. And somebody let me borrow like a really old school one and it had like this massive big rig battery that like jumped. Yeah, there was like two or there something. There was like three or four and it like jumped and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I was a teenager and it was dead. And the guy's like, yeah, man, if you just jump it, the thing will start right up. And the way I connected the jumping <laughs> cables, it exploded, the battery melted. It like caught on fire real quick and then no. and it was like gone. It was like, no, no it's no battery there. <laughs> it was crazy. Let's check for your like squish first. Yeah. No, that, looks, that looks accurate and it definitely looks like it needs, you like that? Yeah, it was my tool. I brought this from my tool. Oh box. my God, I'm, this guy. I teach Lance all the good tools. Before Juan was in here working on bikes, every tool is where it should be in that orange box. Come on, dude. That's that, homie. Film the action. Don't okay. film my face. Nobody wants to see my ugly mug. No, you're, you're beautiful, bro. All right, this is for reals. We think we got to figure it out. We're going to stack them. Whoa. There right, it is, there brother. There it is. It looks like it fits nicely right there. Yeah. Perfect. That's perfect. Shock's going on, baby. We're getting closer and closer to rolling this thing off the lift. Okay. Keep going. Yeah, it's good. Eighty to ninety foot-pounds. This fool. This fool. There it is. Getting close to that point where it looks like a bike. We threw the swing arm on, and now it's on. And the way that it's designed, it's it's at full relax right now. Yeah. And if you were to use any suspension, it would smush the wiring, and even the plastic back here, dude. If the shock's up here, where is it hitting right now? Just there. Yeah. Cut all that. Yeah. We almost need to cut this whole tray off. Yeah. As long as it holds the ECU, and then we'll have to relocate this harness. Let's just see what. So that's where we need to cut. Battery out again and trying to figure out what this whole board right here looks like. We are unhappy with the amount of travel we're getting right now. Yeah. You think there's enough room under that? I under hope so, because I don't think we're gonna get enough travel there, bro. So it's clipped in down here and then there's two screws. Okay. Can we push that up? Where was it at? It just goes into the... All right. All right, well, my question is, can we hide that up here? I don't know, I'm gonna try to unplug everything so we can actually move it around, you know? All right, this is the brain that controls the motorcycle. Can, you, can we just put it back, but just clean it up? Like, can we just cut all the excess? Well, that's what I was thinking. Off of this and just basically put its mechanism back. I mean, you still will have these fat cables going to it. No. That's not why I'm, I think we need to try to get it back in here. Clean up the wiring. Yeah. I think most of this has to come off. Here. I mean, here. this is that plug. If you want to like keep it so that it can stay sealed. Cause then you're still going to have the corners hold it. You can have the areas to screw it back. I just don't know if this is in the way too. We need to cut off majority of this bulk. We do need to leave the four corners. We need to leave the mounting holes all of like that thickness so that the swing arm has enough room to pivot. Right Juan? So when I would cut my number plates on my old freestyle bikes, this is what I used to do. I'd get the tip red hot. Blade gave out. We're gonna just do the last two inches. Whoa. There she is. No, but what about that one? Which time with this? Needs more on the left. This whole tab. Yeah. I'm just gonna cut it off with the snips. All right, so now that we unexpectedly had to trim the BCM, basically plastic cage that's behind the battery. Way more travel. We rerouted some wires. We cut the plastic. You can barely probably see. Oh, we zip tied this on. We did a couple of little rerouting cleanup, right one? Yep, but uh, I think we're happy with where it's at. We're just gonna do the final tightening and then we're gonna put the back wheel on. Well, yeah, let's torque this shock on. Throw it up. There it is. 
We're gonna ride the poop out of it. I got a brake hanger. We're gonna use this because it's part of the wheel spacing. So we need to test it to see what wheel spaces we need. So we have ABS sensor and this is gonna be different and than this. this. And that, and that's gonna all be different. Close to those two pieces though. But Close. Where's the other piece? The thing to note is we did delete the ABS bearing, which is a little, <laughs> little thicker. So we're just gonna go with what we have right now. We'll worry about spacers tomorrow. We'll just kind of get an idea right now. I still think. All right, stop. Hold on. Go for it. Hold on, hold on. Get right there. I'm just leveling it out. Oh, man. What do you think, dude? What's up? Dog. Look at that whole just like set up right there. Gold chain with the raw. I have a feeling that because we don't have the ABS bearing, mm -hmm. which would have been thicker. I'm just gonna remake this the right yeah. size. Oh! I already, already whacked bro. the wheel, bro. All right. I think it's off anyways, dude. I mean, it don't look like it's centered at all. We're gonna take some off of this and add one here. We need to center the caliper yeah. with the rotor. Yep. And then we need to adjust the height. The height is easy. Like that's just- Yeah, I mean- space. I mean, they're both pretty easy, but we just need to measure it. So yeah, we're gonna have to trim the inside spacer mm -hmm. to let it go in yep. more and then- And then put and a, then put on a third one on the outside. To be honest, completely honest, yeah. I thought we would be here before lunch. <laughs> I was like, dude, swing arm. Easy. Front end, easy. You put the front end on 10 times on that bike. But. We have a lot of work to do. A lot more than I had anticipated, to be completely honest, like you're saying. Yeah, got all week. It's Monday. Yeah, so tune in tomorrow, 4 p.m. PST, because we still got a lot more work to do, and we got to get this bike dialed in, and we only have a couple days. So thank you guys for checking this out, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. See you later.